Hello and welcome back to another tutorial by Davies Media Design. Today I'll be showing you how to create arrows using Inkscape. <laughs> Before I get into that guys, if you want to see other tutorials covering free and open source software like Inkscape, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. Let's dive in. So for starters, what you're going to want to do is come over here to the toolbox and grab the pen tool, also known as the Draw Bezier Curves tool or the paths tool. And next what you want to do is draw a line. So arrows will actually work with straight lines as well as curves. So you can draw either one. In this case, I'll just draw a straight line to start. So just left click with your mouse to draw your first node. Hold the control key if you want to draw this in straight line mode. You'll see a little preview there of the line. And then you're just going to click once again on your composition to draw your second point. So once you have your line drawn, you can come over here and just grab another tool like the select tool. And you're gonna get these little transform handles here. So that just indicates that your line is indeed selected. So once your line is selected, if you come down here to the bottom left of your canvas, you're going to see two options. You've got fill, which should be set to none, although there may be a color here. If there is a color here, you could just left click on this X and then you'll have stroke and there should be a color here for your stroke. And then to the right of the color box, this is actually going to be the width of your stroke. So what you can do to edit this is double click on the number here, 1.0. So when I double click on that, it will take you over here to stroke style inside of your fill and stroke dialog. So down here under width, I can change the actual width of the line. So what I'll do is change this to a much thicker line by typing 50 and hit the enter key. So this is set to pixels. You can of course change the units there. The dashes option allows you to change the style of the line itself. So right now this is set to a standard straight line. You can change this to dashes and you can also go with dots if you want to. So basically just different styling elements of your uh, line there. So let's just change this back to a normal straight line. And below the dashes option, you have your markers option. So this is where you're going to add arrowheads or markers. And so you've got a drop down on the far left, you've got one in the middle, and then you've got a drop down on the far right. So these are going to be the directions for the arrow. So the far left one is going to be the starting endpoint over here. So if I click on this, you'll see we get a bunch of different arrow icons and you can click on an icon to add it to that endpoint. And of course, feel free to cycle through these to see the different styles and see which one you like best. They are called markers because they're not all arrows. For example, this is like a Google Maps sort of icon. You've also got a pencil icon there. So let's just go with the standard arrow for this example. And inside of this markers dropdown, besides the icons, you also have a little preview of your arrow. And then you have some options here where you can adjust the styling of the arrow. So for example, size X and size Y, that's going to be the size of the arrowhead itself. And because we have this scale with stroke option checked, it's going to be automatically proportionate to the size of the stroke. So these numbers are not quite accurate right now. If I uncheck this, now you'll see this is the actual numbers that you see. These are in pixels. So if I click on my composition, hold control, zoom in, you'll see we have a very tiny arrowhead now because this is reflecting the actual size of those values. Let's come back to the markers drop down. So keep scale with stroke turned on if you want to have your arrowhead automatically adjust based on the size of the stroke width. But you can change the values here. So if I change this to 10 and hit the enter key, it's going to make the arrow much larger. By default, you'll have a chain link icon that's linked right here. So that will automatically maintain the aspect ratio of the arrowhead. And if I come over here and I click to unlink this and then I adjust one of the values here, you'll see it'll sort of squish this in. So the aspect ratio has now changed and I can manually adjust the size Y there. And again, if you turn off scale with stroke, it's going to show the true size there. So now we could type something like 40 for the X and Y and you'll see it's still pretty small there. So you do have to make this fairly large if you uncheck scale with stroke. 
So you can always reset the values by coming over and just clicking on the arrow again. So let's click on this arrow head. Now the values are reset back to the defaults. So below these options, you have the orientation option. By default, this is set to orient along the path, reversing at the start. So reversing at the start is just the direction of this arrow here. So it's saying at the very start of our path, this will face in the reverse direction compared to the direction of this arrow on this side. So you can switch that to just orient along the path and that'll just flip the direction of the arrow. And if you come over here, you have fixed specified angle. So if I click on that, that's going to show the fixed angle numerical field here. So it basically unlocks that. And now I can set this based on any angle. I can click the plus or minus icons here to sort of gradually increase or decrease the values, or I could manually type a value like minus 30, and that's going to basically rotate that by minus 30 degrees. So let's reset that back to zero, and let's also come back here and set the orientation back to the original option. So you also have this little flip icon, and that's just going to flip the arrow right there in position. So you'll see it's very similar to this option here, orient along the path, except it is flipping it exactly along the center of the arrowhead. So it's flipping it along that axis and you do get a little bit of the back of the path sticking out of the arrow. So slightly different in that way. So let's come over here and flip that back. You also have offset X and Y, which is going to offset the position of the arrow along the path. So if I come over here to offset X and type 10, you'll see it's going to shift it along the path. And if I type minus five, it'll shift it the other way. And to be totally honest, I'm not sure what units these are in because it's not in percentage or pixels. So I'm not sure what units this uses, but let me set that back to zero. So shifting offset X will shift it to the left or right. Offset Y is going to shift it up or down. So if I type five, it'll shift it down. Negative five, it'll shift it up. So that allows you some flexibility there to change where exactly the arrowhead is positioned. You also have this button that says edit on canvas. When you click on that, it's going to give you some handles over here on your canvas. The middle handle allows you to move the arrowhead around. So you can move it left, right, up or down. So that is going to be that offset X and offset Y value. This little circular handle in the corner is going to rotate it. So that's gonna be that fixed specified angle option. And then this option here allows you to scale this up or down, this handle here. And I'm holding the control key right now. That way it maintains the aspect ratio. So that allows you to scale the arrow. And if I come over here to the markers drop down, you'll see that was the size X and Y fields. So these are our new settings based on the on canvas edits we just made. So as you can see, orientation got automatically checked to fixed specified angle. Fixed angle got changed to around 208. Offset X and Y changed and the size changed. And also this little uh, chain link icon got unlinked. So let's come back and reset this back to the defaults once again. And let's also move on now to the right marker. So the right drop down. Everything is going to be the same about this drop down, except it's going to place the arrowhead on the far right of the path or wherever the end of the path is located. And of course, as per usual, you can cycle through the different arrowheads. So the settings will be independent for these two arrowheads, which means you can customize this arrowhead to be whatever settings you want and have it look different than the left one if that's what you want to do, or you can have them both be the same. That's entirely up to you. And finally, let's move on to the middle marker drop down here. And so when I click on here, if I were to select an arrow right now, nothing would happen because this is placing markers or arrowheads on nodes along the path in between the starting and ending nodes. So right now there are no nodes in the middle of this path. So there's nowhere for this to be placed. However, I can add nodes by coming over here to the edit paths by nodes tool. And I can simply double click on the path to add a node. And you'll see that as I add nodes, it's going to add arrowheads or markers at those nodes. So that's what that middle option is doing there. If you want to see that in action a little bit better, I can change this to a different icon there. 
And just like I said with the other options, you can customize this. So let's change the size to a smaller size like so. So that provides you with some flexibility there. Let's come over here and just close this drop down. So if you want to change the color of this, you can come over here and grab your select tool. And all you have to do is come over here to your color swatches and shift click on a color. So because this is basing the color off of the stroke color, you do have to shift click. You can also of course come over here to stroke paint and manually select a color this way. And one thing I want to point out as you guys can probably see is that the arrowheads do not change color along with the rest of the arrow. So that in my opinion is a bug just based on some research I did and there's sort of a weird way to fix that. If you come over here to stroke style and you just decrease the size of the width and then increase it again, that will change the arrows there the color of the arrows. So that kind of happens every time you try to change the color. If I shift click on this, you'll see once again that the arrowheads remain green. So yeah, you do have to just come over here and sort of do that little move. You can also go to path, stroke to path, and that will convert this whole thing to a path and then you can change the color. The only issue with doing that is you can no longer edit the markers once you've done that or edit the arrows. So that's sort of a more destructive way of getting around that bug. So let me show you one more example using a curved line. So I'll grab the pen tool here from the toolbox and I'm just going to click and drag my mouse to create a curve. And then let's grab the select tool over here in fill and stroke. You could change the width. Let's go with 25, change the markers here. We'll do a dotted line or a dashed line. And then for the markers, let's do a marker on the front. And so there is a quick arrow using a curved line. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.